I'm John Diarmo with the Coquia Valley Sword Group. And I'm Edward. And today we're going over the application of Kazuki. Lots of happiness. So, uh, to begin, let's go ahead and demonstrate the kata once and uh, then move into a lot of the application. Right? So, as always, I am Uchidachi, Edward is Shirachi. Real straightforward, real simple, right? So there are a couple things going on in this kata, right? What we're trying to do is create this sort of uh, kind of like a ebb and flow snap pack, right? The first tricky part is on uh, Shidachi's second step. Shidachi grips that sword, bump, and he's just chilling, right? Just hanging out there, just waiting, right? And he's sort of broken timing with, with Uchijachi, right? They're coming together like, okay, we're going to fight, we're going to fight, we're going to fight. And the guy just stops. It's like, yeah, now you got to come into my space. Why? Because this is the most dangerous part of any uh, physical altercation, any direct sort of melee competition between folks, is this where... The attacker has to enter into the space of the defender. Uh, once you're there, you know, it's, it's, you know, chaos and bluster and all that. But uh, comparatively, it's fairly safe because they have to contend with your work just as much as you're contending with theirs. As I transition into this space, uh, Eddie can work on me right away. So it's, um, it, it's rough for the attacker. And so he's trying to put himself at an advantage. Uh, in the kata, Uchidachi's like, I don't give a care, right? And he goes to pop him, right? Boom. And this is where the magic happens. With this step off the line and this strong inward drive, right? Um, relax. When, when people start doing this kata, uh, it's, it's very typical for them to either try and step straight forward or to come like too wide and then try and do the capture with the second step. Um, neither of these is really ideal because what we're trying to do is in the same way that we have, uh, we, let's say he's high, right? He, we've forced them to come into our space, right? We're driving into theirs, right? And that means that, yes, we have to come off the line, but uh, only a bit, right? And it means that, yes, we're going to intercept and connect with their sword, but we don't want to um, waste a lot of time in motion. Uh, going different directions. Right, going in, in large lateral motions when we're driving, right? Because the goal here is to catch him, right? Right, and to come into this kind of space, right? I can use my lead hand uh, to this end. In the kata, we're catching pretty much dead center of the nakahodo, uh, the middle of the sword, right, as we do it. Below our hand, down onto the spine, bum, right, bum, right. But in uh, application, we use the open fingers of that pinch grip, right. We can stop and slow his sword, literally taking hold of it, right? My Don't fingers wrap are, around it. Yeah, no wrap around it. That's, you like your fingers, right? Hold it tight. Boom. And then, just like in Kazuki, we can use that uh, like a pool cue, right? Bop. To work into him. Bop. Into, so he gets in its key, into the throat, I mean, into the face or wherever we want, using that as kind of a control and forcing them to focus on their body and their position rather than the immediate recovery of their sword. More often than not, however, we tend to use this front hand 
on their arm, right? Boom! Because I'm driving that edge in, in really deep into the arm, right? Cutting, rolling the cut down, boom! Taking hold, and I'm applying that same sort of pool cue methodology, but as I'm slicing on his wrist, as I'm driving into his gut, ba, right? Ba. Um, it should go without saying. Don't turn your edge into your hand, or you won't have a hand, right? Don't accidentally roll your finger too close to your head. <laughs> right, right. It pepperoni the side of your knuckle off. Ask me how I know. <laughs> so, this, um, it's grappling, right? This is entirely a grappling oh, no. Uh, movement. No, you can keep your sword. You can keep your sword. <laughs> to where they're coming. Bump. And we're just taking that arm for control. Now we can move into uh, the arm locks that we use in the Kodachi Waza, the short sword work. Uh, we can go into this sort of like simple stuff, right? Stuff into the face and start working or we can do work of the turning door, right? To where I do that same work, and either I position my foot behind him, or I don't, and I strike him, right? Boom! Squarely in his chest with my shoulder. Now that was a very boop, gentle tap in this relation and striking this manner, um, you can really hurt a dude, right? So you want to be a little careful with your partner. Um, but careful doesn't mean wimpy, right? A uh, good way to practice this, go ahead and set the sword down. Uh, I'll do it with the other shoulder so you can see, is to have your partner just stand there, right? You come close and you just bump, right? Bump, bump. Uh, what this is not, is leaning in. Right, you're, you're, you're not trying to whip him with your shoulder. You're not trying to like hit him with your head, right? You're coming in with your hips. Boom. And striking. Boom. Right? A little bit of this sort of uh, light pushing. And you can start to work on uh, directing him, how you can change your orientation. So Edward's quite uh, larger than I am. So for me, my tendency would be to, instead of uh, trying to get above his access and push him down, right, unless I had my foot. If I have my foot, then I can bring him down to the ground fairly easy. But uh, without it, I'm going to have a rough time. So for me, what I'll tend to do, bump, is I'll come low, working to strike that, boom. So he gets, right, uh, the mark, as it's called in, in old school boxing, right, to knock the wind out of him to really kind of muff up his day. Any kind of massive distortion of a person's form like this uh, in open-handed work is rough. With, with weapons, they're pooched, right? There's, it's, it's very hard to recover from that. Um, so let's go ahead and look at some open-handed applications for this, right? So if... Uh, I mean, it should be fairly obvious. If Eddie's trying to hit me, right, and my goal is to come in, to grapple with him, to take control, I'm doing the same work, nice and slow, right? I'm coming, I'm creating that same, the same wall that I created with the sword. I'm creating with my arm, bump, as I step off the line. I'm bringing his position off to bring him forward, and I'm driving in. The drive in is what lets me generate force. I can come up and start to take his neck. Whether my goal is to strike, to start to bring him down, to bring him down just from my upper body using my hips, um, whatever kind of grappling work uh, or striking work that I prefer. Um, if what you're looking to do is more uh, sort of joint work oriented, we can do the same work, but as I come up, I take control here and I drive through, right? Driving through the elbow, 
to dislocate it or to drive them to the ground. Um, it, it depends on how uh, excited I am and how, um, how your opponent's inertia is moving, right? If they're in motion already, uh, they will often save themselves with little damage. But if you've, uh, if you've, uh, use the other hand so they can see, right? Well, if you've stacked them a bit, right, and caused their force to go uh, and sort of uh, lock up, then, yeah, then it's, uh, you're much more likely to create damage here. Um, whether or not you are choosing to damage their joint as part of your strategy or not is really dependent on the situation, right? Um, because usually it takes uh, extra thought to get them into a position to do that. Normally, you'll get that joint, and you have the lock, uh, but you're, eh, even though the elbow doesn't take a lot of pressure to break, right, it has to be stabilized, which means the rest of their body has to kind of not, not be running away from it, basically, or, or going with it or in motion. Uh, so it does take, it, it's, it's a little bit harder than I think that some people that do this work would like to imagine. Um, that being said, uh, even if you have kind of a very poor grasp of the lock, you're going to be able to bring them to the ground uh, fairly simply. You know, again, as long as you're not like trying to throw them with your shoulders, right? Your body core. Use that uh, strength, especially when you're working against somebody bigger, stronger, heavier than you, right? This, this little guy can't be all like, I'm pushing you over. Right? It doesn't work so great. Sumo pushes. Right. Um, of course, uh, knife work is the same. If Eddie has his knife, I forgot my trainer, so we'll do this this way. Right. So Eddie has his knife. He's working against me. He wants to, to cut or stab or whatever. Cut. Right. And I'm looking for that same shuck, right, to stuff and control. Um, now, yeah, I can do all sorts of fancy stuff where I bring his knife across him, but uh, that kind of work looks really cool in class, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't hold up too well when you just kind of go a little rough with it. So uh, my experience is that you just shuck and you control their position. You take their, their box of strength, right? Their shoulder and their hips, and you get that pointed the hell away from you. Because as long as this is pointed at you, it doesn't matter what I'm doing here. It doesn't matter how I have a hold. He can apply his strength to remove this tool. He can apply his hips to work it uh, irregardless of my lock, right? So I have to break this relation, right? I have to get him facing somewhere else. And usually I'll do that through uh, a combination of adjusting his posture and adjusting my location. Whether I'm cross-stepping to take his neck, whether I'm stepping in to work his elbow, or uh, his shoulder, or whether I'm trying to work uh, strikes or to break down his posture, or whatever my specific strategy happens to be or the type of work that I'm familiar with. Um, because remember, right, Hyoho is, um, it, it's, it's a, system of strategy. It's, it's a method of like uh, planning as to how you're going to go about this operation. It is, uh, a, for the most part, uh, technique agnostic, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, you can, you use it with whatever technical work that you like, right? If you're uh, maybe like a, a Gian fighter, right? You have your own method and your own sort of philosophy in how you move your body and how you target and how you engage and how you uh, manipulate your opponent in the distance, right? It's not as though it's like, oh, well, I want to study Kyoho. I just have to throw all that out the window. Um, while it is true that Kyoho has technical work, uh, in every case, this is just to provide an example for the uh, strategic principles. And it's, it's not necessary. Um, it is a mistake to imagine that the point of Musashi's school is to teach a person a specific type of cut that is better than other people's cuts. 
right, or a specific type of parry or, or whatever. That's not what it's about. Um, and it's kind of the childish, easy grab for beginners, which is fine, right? But it, you have to keep your perspective, right? It's like uh, when you're first teaching somebody how to shoot a pistol, you, you sit them up, you know, five, seven yards from the target, have them sit still, square hips, point, trigger pull, trigger release, trigger pull, trigger release. This is, of course, it, it has no, no connection to using a pistol defensively or using the pistol in a military setting. Or even hitting the target. Or, well, yeah, hopefully they're hitting the target. It, it, it's just a way to introduce them to the most basic concepts. And the technical work in Kyoho is the same way, right? It's, it's we're just, the we're just introducing them to a real simple concepts um, until it becomes natural for them to go, oh, dude's attacking me, right? <laughs> And I've, I've got him under control. I have lots of happiness because I've taken his position. His force, his danger, his work is somewhere else. And I'm free for like almost a turn and a half to do what I want to this dude to make sure that he can't go, that wasn't very nice, and work me, right? So, um, yeah. I don't think there's really a point in showing this work with the Fukuro Shinai because it's not, uh, it's not fundamentally, actually maybe, maybe, the entrance can be different. So yeah, let's go ahead and pick up the Fukuro Shinai. So, with this work, uh, there can be this sense of how do I get there? Again, somebody who kind of knows what's going on or is just a little perceptive, right? Because obviously, if, if you're working a dude and you're just like, right, <laughs> the jig is up. <laughs> like he's like, oh really? I, call I don't know what you're doing there, but I'm not gonna play your game, right? And they're gonna just like peck at you to get you to break your position or try and- See if you get baited into something. Faint to reveal what you're doing. Yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna play you a bit. So how do you do this work? How do you, how do you move into it? And, just as always, what we do in the kata doesn't represent combat, right? It's, it's breaking down aspects of combat uh, to s discrete individual pieces that are quite large so that we can see them, right? Well, once we see them and get a handle of them and, and our body can kind of go, oh, this is, this is what we're doing, then we can integrate them into our work, right? So. If Eddie and I are working, right, right, and he's just fighting normal, right, right, and the transition is as so, right, ba, 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 he came in, transition, right, came in, and transition. It's a moving together, right, and just being able to, even if you're working sort of two-handed with the swords. Ba. Now this takes practice, right? Because, nice and slow. Oh! Our eye tends to go towards motion, right? And then your hand goes towards motion. Exactly, and unfortunately their motion is quite detrimental to the things that we're trying to move forward. Um, so it takes time to really get that sense of, this is where I'm contacting with the sword, right? Boom. And to bring uh, your edge meaningfully to their shinogi, to their side, right? And then onto their mune, right? Because again, ah, it's really bad for me. Uh, you know, now maybe I'm wearing a tare, maybe I've, I've got the sort of hip skirt armor, right? Um, which is, is not, is, is, it's not like an apologetic excuse, right? This is, again, from Takenouchi Ryu, right? Old battlefield, large scale mass combat, done in armor work. Um, and you can use this work against Naginata, you can use it against Yari, you can use it against anything, right? Um, 
it's it's meant to come in close with a dude to grapple him to control him and to resolve him right um, but we, we still don't want to bring their sword down into us in an arc we want to control it boop, and so that it's pinned not uh, driving in now uh, let's go ahead and switch sides some people uh, most people, <laughs> most people who've got an idea that swords cut meat and we're meat, have uh, this kind of thought with the sword. Let's say that you bring this sword into position just nice and simple, his boot is up, his edge down. What is to stop him from turning his sword blade into you and cutting you? And the answer is absolutely nothing, right? There, there's, this is not some magical position that makes his sword triangles and, and right right he can still cut you here if um if his mind lets him almost yeah and that's it is that here his focus is on his sword it's on cutting and then it's in his face it's in his chest it's in this getting away sort of sense again it's not to say that he can't cut you from here because he can Right? So if you do this, if you try and apply this uh, as it is in Kata, where we keep everything safe, you've given him enough space to work you. Right? But um, when you work it at close distance, where in this parry, you're taking his face and his guts. And that's my new focus, right? And his hand and you have control on his arm, he can't turn out to cut me. I mean, you could try, right? Bump, bump, bump. Yep. And what was that response? It was the next step in the kata, the drive with the thrust, you see? The kata is built for a reason. Not to mimic fighting, but to kind of uh, enlarge so that we might elucidate the, the individual elements, right? Once you understand that, uh, you'll begin to look at kata a lot differently, right? And when you watch other people's kata, you'll realize that it's not like, oh, they can't fight worth shit. Look, their kata's not flashy. It's not fast. It's slow or it's whatever. Whatever your, you know, internet opinion is. Um, you'll be able to see the individual interactions and go, oh, they're, they're, they're in this kind of interaction. And if you either are familiar with the work uh, through your own school or, or through talking with people, uh, you you can begin to kind of decode it a bit, right? Um, a bit. <laughs> so um, I think that's about it. Do you have anything you want to add? For... Don't screw up your footwork. Yeah. Or you'll fall on your face. Yeah, footwork is, is pretty pretty important. The potty knees are important. Right, getting that ba ba right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and keep your shoulders under control, right? Anytime we interact up here with pressure, with strength, with anything, we, especially as Westerners, tend to just exist from our belt line up. And we're up we here, and we're pushing around, and we're pushing in, and, and our, our shoulders and chest are going all sorts of places. Free country. Right, where our hips are not. <laughs> and so it's super important to make sure that they're consolidated, right? That as you work, ba ba ba, right? Your, your spine is straight, your tailbone's tucked, but your head pulls up, right? All the things that he talks about, all the things that you should know, right? But yeah, I think that's pretty much it for Kazuki, as always. If you want to understand this work, you have to pick up a sword and go train.